day 12. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, unit 3, reading 2, The Road to Success. We're still talking about the same thing, only today our focus is on reading 2. Open your textbook at page 71. Reading 2, Kids Learn Poise Through Dance. That's interesting. Look at the bold face words and phrases in the reading and think about the questions. Let's look at the words first, okay? We've got civility, poise, social graces. Um, go to the next page. We've got proficient. Uh, we've got camaraderie, nurture. That's about it. Those are the words that we're looking at um, for reading too. Now, which words or phrases do you know the meaning of? Maybe you can write them down that you already know. And maybe the ones that you don't know, you can look them up. If you need it in Basel and Indonesia, you can do that as well. And can you use any of the words or phrases in a sentence? Now, we're going to check that in our next Zoom meeting. Read the passage, Kids Learn Poise Through Dance. And as you read, notice the bold face vocabulary, how it is used in context of the text. If you don't know the word yet, you can basically figure out the meaning of the word by looking at the context. Yeah. Now, before we do that, let's go through the reading strategies. Number one, previewing to predict the type, the text type and the purpose to create focus. We do that by reading the introduction. Um, we do that by looking at the title, sorry, and the subtitles and um, the visuals. In this case, there are no subtitles or subheadings, yeah? Number two is skimming, where we would read the introductory paragraph and we would read every um, topic sentence of every body paragraph and the concluding paragraph in order to get the main idea. Right, then we would go to number three is basically question analysis to figure out the topic and the purpose of the question. Then we would do active reading or intensive reading while annotating the body paragraphs while we read for important main points and details. Then the, we would, would go back to the question and then scan through the text to find a particular keyword, reading the surrounding text before and after the keyword to find the meaning and the answer to the question. Great, I'm gonna give you some time to skim the text right now. Go ahead. Awesome, that brings us to listening to it. While you skim a text, you would basically also annotate straight away uh, the keywords in the introduction, the concluding paragraph, but also the topic sentences, which leaves us now to really read the text and annotate or make margin notes on the body paragraphs. Um, I'm going to turn on uh, the audio so you can listen and read as we go. Kids learn poise through dance. You might think that the only music kids today are dancing to is rap, but for the early show's study hall report, correspondent Melinda Murphy found that New York City's public schools are using classic dance tunes to teach kids manners and civility. The fact that a New York elementary school is located in one of the city's poorest neighborhoods doesn't mean that its fifth graders will lack poise or social graces. They are learning them on the dance floor. Dance instructor Daniel Panickley notes, They don't yet know how to be ladies and gentlemen, but I say to them, you are going to become ladies and gentlemen, and all of a sudden, when they come to class, their shirts are tucked in. They stand up straighter. Panickley is one of more than 30 ballroom instructors teaching dances like the foxtrot and swing in New York City's inner city schools. We're teaching them that they matter and that they can show it, Panickley says. This program was started by Pierre Dulaine, a four-time British exhibition dance champion. Eleven years ago, Dulaine offered to teach ballroom in one school. Today, his instructors teach in more than 60 schools. Dulaine says it has developed into an arts and education program where the children learn about ballroom dancing and dances from different countries. But most important, they learn teamwork, having to work with another human being.
It's not easy for a young boy and girl, lady and gentleman, to work with each other. For Rosemary Tejada, the course had an added benefit. She says, I've gotten to be better friends with a boy. I've known my partner since first grade, but we didn't really communicate a lot. But now, with ballroom dancing, we've communicated more. At the end of every course, all the schools compete in a series of competitions. Tejada and her partner, Julian Perez, have made it to the semifinals. At the competition, I'm really excited, but I'm also nervous, Tejada says. To compete, teams must be proficient in five dances, swing, rumba, foxtrot, tango, and merengue. But each couple also has a specialty, and Tejada's is swing. She says, in swing, you really move a lot, and you feel in a happy mood. I get to express my feelings when I dance. It is wonderful to see the students getting excited about something as old-fashioned as ballroom dance. Dulane notes, there is a camaraderie that develops between them, and it's a camaraderie to excel. He adds, quite honestly, I'm not interested in whether they remember every single step. Learning to touch someone with respect is the key to all of ballroom dancing. In this competition, Tejada and her teammates won a silver trophy, but Dulane hopes that they've also gained an interest in a pastime that promotes grace, manners, and civility. He says, all those children love to dance. They have their imagination, and this is what we need to nurture. If you'd like to learn more, there is a documentary movie about the program entitled Mad Hot Ballroom. Okay, great. That brings us to the comprehension questions. You gotta circle the answer to the questions below. There may be more than one correct answer. Okay, so the first thing you do is you annotate the questions on the keywords and the answer choices. Yes, then you go back to the text, you scan the text in order to find the keyword to answer the question. You can pause your video, go ahead. Awesome, that brings us to reading scale. Reread reading to circle the keywords that are important examples or details about what happened to the students in ballroom dancing. Okay, try that one out first, pause your video and do that. Great, that brings us to the part of using keywords. Keywords are the most important details or examples in a reading. By circling or highlighting keywords, which is annotating, and then reviewing them, you will better understand and remember the information in the reading. This process will also help you see the way the various parts of a reading fit together or are correlated. For example, the keywords poise and social graces appear in paragraph two, because this paragraph is about the qualities that students learn on the dance floor. It's the keywords that matter that help us connect the dots. Great. Now, I'd like you to put the keywords in the correct category. Okay, we've got here students' feelings, skills learned, and accomplishments. And we've got the keywords nervous, silver trophy, teamwork, respect, excited, dances from different countries, poison social graces, semi-finalists. I love to dance and com camaraderie and manners. Now I want you to place the keywords in the correct category. Okay, go ahead. You can do that now. Great. Now in our Zoom meeting, we can try to summarize how the students felt and what they had learned and what they had accomplished. Right, and we are at the point of connecting the readings. Remember just now, we analyzed the text and we kind of uh, correlated the information. And now we are uh, connecting um, the, the both texts. So we're gonna look at um, both uh, readings. Here we're looking at a Venn diagram and the circles overlap. So the left part, which is a yellow part, I'll show you right now shows the differences differences also the blue one but the green one where it overlaps it shows the similarity similarities whereas left and right shows the differences 
Where the circles overlap, write the similar things, Katie, which is the reading one, and Rosemary to Hada, reading two, learned or felt in their dance experiences. In Katie's circle that's left, write what only Katie learned or felt from the experience. And in Rosemary's circle, that's the blue purple one, it's a right side, write what only Rosemary learned or felt. Okay, so this is basically where you're connecting the dots of reading one and reading two and connecting it, correlating it. I'm gonna give you some time to do that, go ahead. Great, that brings us to step two, which is synthesizing. Basically, this is the part of evaluating. So we've already connected all the dots. We've come to a justification or a conclusion, an idea. And now we are kind of creating something new with it. Yeah, um, here is a dialogue. Uh, we're supposed to write a dialogue between Katie and Rosemary Tahada in which they explain their feelings about dancing and what they learn from their experiences you can use this uh you can use this sample beginning or just create your own from scratch or you use the sample beginning and continue it uh, that is up to you okay so i want you to write a dialogue between katie and rosemary and you base your dialogue on the venn diagram the connection of the ideas that you already made let's say if you were to start with this i saw your school dance in the competition you were great I also love to dance for the public, but I do tap dancing, not ballroom dancing. Do you dance with a partner? I would be scared to get up there alone. So what I want you to do is continue this dialogue or just make one from scratch, which is different, but it should be based on the similarities and differences from reading one and two, what we have already correlated just now. Great, that brings us to the end of our lesson. And uh, I would like to review with you a real quick what we did today. So the first thing we did was uh, looking at the vocabulary and the meaning of the boldface words in context of a text and kind of using the context in order to analyze what the meaning is of the word. Then we went over comprehension of the text um, basically, we went over the strategies of reading, which are predicting, skimming, question analysis, intensive reading, question analysis, and scanning. And uh, we did annotating the underlining and hi highlighting or circling of keywords, so keywording and margin notes, in order to find the keywords to scan through the text to answer the questions. We went over the reading skill of using keywords, why keywords are important. Yeah, they carry the main information of a sentence and are used for annotating. And then we connected reading one with reading two by correlating the most important points, looking at a Venn diagram of similarities and differences. And with that, creating something new, which is a role play, exactly, a dialogue to be more exact. Okay, guys, that is it for today. You did a great job. Uh, let's be excited for the next video. I will see you soon and God bless you. Bye-bye.